What's happening my epic people? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing amazing as possible. No, I don't plan on making this a long video at all. Just sort of a, a quick update as to what's going on with the channel, what's going on with the bike. Because if anybody did catch the uh, a post in the community section, slating, slating that KTM Super Duke GT that I owned. Now, don't get me wrong, when it worked well, it was a cracking machine. It was quick, it was nippy, it would you know, flick around corners really well and you know, plenty of excitement and all, all the rest of the list, which you know, if you want to see my video about that, I'll pop it up top now. now unfortunately, that uh, Super Duke GT had too many electrical issues, which, you know, that is from what I hear, what I read, um, you know, it's just a KTM thing. You know, there'll probably be some unicorns out there or even maybe many bikes that haven't had the issues because, you know, people only voice it when they have issues with bikes. And tend to voice it when everything's going well but oh this will be fun um so yeah electrical issues it you know when I, on my first day of having it you know it started right from there oh sugar thankfully i'm on a grom so i actually Not too bad of a job. Anyway, so where was I? So yeah, it all started with day one. And day one being, you know, straight away I had a brake light switch fault. And then something to do with the cruise control. But then it all went away. So I was like, well, no big deal, no problem. You know, these, these things just happen, they come and go. You know, it can happen with many brands. And then, I was riding to work one morning and I come out of this bend, accelerated up to speed, uh, you know, just fairly hard acceleration, but all of a sudden the bike died on me, just completely switched off everything. So while it's moving, I'm attempting to get it started again. And I did manage to get it started again. But there was nothing on the dash, there was no lights, there was nothing, absolutely nothing, other than obviously the engine running. So, you know, got back up speed again while I'm right while I'm riding, switched off, switched back on. Probably not the safest move to do. So, you know, for any uh beginner rider out of I do not recommend it. But you know, needs must sometimes. And uh so it fired up, the screen fired up. And um but it had basically a Christmas tree of warnings all over the dashboard. You know, one saying engine engine failure and one saying uh, you know cruise control, ABS, traction control, the full works. <laughs> to which that made me lose quite a bit of faith and confidence in the bike so you know I did the regular checks check the battery you know check connections you know any sort of nips and bites in the wires Sorry, my voice goes a little bit shaky, guys. Obviously, country roads and this Grom. It's a bit bouncy, to say the least. And, uh, so I couldn't see the issues. You know, and I did want to take the bike apart because I'd only just got it. Being that I wanted to still, you know, if I had to send it back, be within my rights. So I had to get on that pretty quickly. So, you know, I called up the dealership I got it from which happened to be Superbike Factory. And in all fairness, I thought they would handle it pretty shakily. I thought they would try to sort of palm it off, etc., etc. But at the end of the day, I was within my rights. They knew that, I knew that. There was no issues, there was no getting around that. What 
these guys are doing. Let's go and have a little check, shall we? You okay there, my man? You're not stuck, are you, or anything? No, not yet. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> anyway, where was I? So, on the phone, Super Bike Factory, uh, speaking to a lady called Sarah, and, you know, she was fantastic. No problems whatsoever. Uh, you know, so every now and then I sort of get past to one of her colleagues, which would be a bit unsure of the case, and, you know, might tell me one thing, and then, Sarah would have to jump on the phone straight away to clear something up and then you know as soon as I speak to her bang straight away reassurance got it all sorted you know straight away she dealt with the finance company she dealt with the uh, the warranty side of things and oh, it was yeah brilliant so I know people put down Superbike factory and I understand why but I think a lot of the time now, I'm not saying it's always like this. I'm sure, you know, there are cases where it's a little bit mismanaged and this or the other, but you have to take into, you know, take into consideration that there's a human element to this. Now, some people, they not really looking into their consumer rights and this and the other, so like, I don't know, however long down the road, something goes wrong, and it's unfortunate that it's a, it appears to be, something that could have gone wrong anyway you know something that could you know wouldn't have been Superbike Factory's fault in the slightest and it has to be within the time frame for the Consumer Rights Act to work I mean there's so many little loopholes and things in and out of this stuff anyway I digress straight away Sarah got me my refund no issues at all now I'm shopping for another bike but during the time that I was waiting for my refund now this leads me on to why I'm on this now granted, yes, I needed a bike to ride because that's, that's therapy, man. That's, that's riding a that's riding a motorcycle. But on the first week, my wife had, unfortunately, uh, her car decided to shit itself. So to do with the all cooler. So I loaned her my car. I said, do you use my car? And I'll just borrow this Honda Grom from my good friend Woody. No problems at all. That's how you solve issues, you just get on with it. Yeah, okay, it's a little bit cold, it's quite wet. And then on the day that it happens, you know when uh, it really hammered it down? And, you know, if you live in Norfolk, you'll know that there were so many roads where, you know, basically like having a river in the middle of the road. Uh, my wife, unfortunately, drove my car through one of them big puddles. Uh, I'm not going to say <laughs> how it exactly happened, but it's quite funny anyway. And um, nearly hydro locked my car. Unfortunately, she couldn't get it started that night. So now I'm stuck with just a Honda Grom to go and pick my wife up and two of my children who are in the car. So that was never going to happen. Uh, so my boss loaned me his nice Mercedes. So for one night only, I got to feel like I had, you know, I was living in money, man. <laughs> you know, climate control, heated seats, you know, be bright white Mercedes. You know, so anyway, picked them up, McDonald's, everything. Things are all good again. Doesn't defeat the fact that the only working vehicle that we actually had in the, in the household was this Honda Grub. Which to me, I find quite hilarious. So post haste, I needed a bigger motorcycle, uh, I needed the cars back. So as we speak, my wife's car is being fixed. I managed to, a couple of days after, go down to where she had got my car stuck. And with much perseverance and from a very good friend of mine, we managed to get it started again. Chucked all the water out of it, you know, it just spat as much as it could. Thankfully, it was a diesel. 
so much easier to to get it started brilliant so we have a car again so we have a car and a grom i can now get to work so on to my next machine which i'm not going to obviously tell you what it is because where's the fun in that same with every other bike uh, i feel like i'm you know changing motorcycles uh more than i change my underwear which is getting oddly kind of boring it's not the picking up the new motorcycle is boring because obviously not that's fantastic you know everyone loves getting a new bike a new bike day is fantastic but it's going through the process it's uh you know dotting the i's crossing the t's all that stuff it's just uh, it's very draining but that's just how it goes so hopefully this next motorcycle i've gone down a very reliable route so i'll leave you all guessing very reliable it does long distance it could easily do some touring hopefully if my skill depends and you know if i work out how to you know where to go and what to do then it could have uh, some very serious off-road capabilities but i'm sure my next video will hopefully be showing you what the new motorcycle is so that's my little update as to what's been going on you know not overly exciting but certainly from mine and my wife's perspective quite an irritating uh, process but that's just how things go it was fairly stressful but we're okay no one got hurt Man, I love this little bike. If you haven't actually had a chance to try a Honda Grom, you should. They are absolutely hilarious. Apart from in the hammering down hailstorm rain, that's not a lot of fun, um, truth be told. But still, it gets the adrenaline pumping, and any type of riding is enjoyable as long as you're riding. But unfortunately this thing doesn't hold top speed well when you know all you want to do is at least be doing 60 miles an hour on a dual carriageway and then when you see that a little gust of wind hits you and blasts you backwards that you shoot right down to 45 and then a truck overtakes you and then you start to build speed again and then you're ready to overtake the truck and then a hill happens or well, the wind hits you again and then you drop back down so then you're back to square one so that's the joys of riding a 125 is that <laughs> it takes a lot of planning and to anybody who now rides big bikes or has ridden big bikes for years and maybe has forgotten what it is like to ride a small capacity machine like this Honda Grom it would be wise to remember that there is a lot involved and a lot of careful planning a lot of mind power that goes into riding a 125 compared to a bigger bike anyway guys so i've waffled on long enough just that wanted to give a quick update um but videos will resume as normal very very soon and even if i don't happen to get my bike as quickly as i'd like not a problem i'll just do some videos on this and we can go through techniques tactics and things all right then my guys so thanks for watching thanks for being patient to all you loyalists that are here and still keep watching thank you so much really does mean a lot and as always if there's anything you think i could be doing any videos that you would like to see topics etc or any advice you know where my dms are or just pop it down in the comment section below and we can go over things. Alright. Alright then guys. Catch you later. Peace.